Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, so welcome back. Uh, let's do an example of a power signal. So here's an example. Uh, no, normally I told you that mostly the power signals are your periodic signals. Uh, so let's take an example of a periodic signal. In our case, uh, let's take an example of a cos function. So let's say I have a cos function, which is 2 pi f1 of t. And I have this function. Okay, what is this function looks like? So once you take a square of your cos function. Once you take a square of your cos function, you will get this. The cos function gets shifted um, uh, a, a, on the spectrum. So this thing goes up. This actually becomes a cos squared. This is how a cos squared looks like. Why am I doing it? Because here's the definition. The definition I have for power signal is this. So Px is actually as limit t reaches infinity is 1 over t with respect to t. Uh, um, x of t magnitude squared dt. So this entire thing is exactly the same as energy signal, but we're taking an average of a signal of this. We're taking an average of a signal, and so it would become a cos function. It, 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 sorry, it would become a power signal, not, not a cos function, it will actually become a power signal. So let's try to do this and let's try to find out how actually I calculate this uh, a power signal. And uh, so for power signal to be power signal, it will have a finite power. So let's try to calculate what is the power of this cos function. So let's say this, this signal has some amplitude called B. And so once I square it, I'll get this. Okay, so the first thing, so as you notice this, uh, the limits, limits are nothing, it's just a fancy way of writing 1 over t, 1 over four, uh, one, uh, a period. So this is just to define half of a period. So this is basically just defining half of a period. So it's just a fancy way of writing 1 over 4 in terms of frequency. There's a reason I'm writing it. So, so let's do this. So now here, I'm just going to apply my signal, which is B. So this is going to be... 1. What is going to be my complete period, guys? If I were to look at it, so I'll just take, so, so, so this, this, this whole thing is 1 over 4, so this is going to be twice of that. So 1 over 4 F1, when I multiply this by 2, so this would become 1 half. So this, it's actually 1 over 2 times f1 all right so this was a period there's two of them so when i multiply it by two i would get one over four f1 i'm just writing it in terms of frequency okay let's apply our limits our limits are going from one over four f1 to positive one over four f1 all right Next is my signal itself, so which is B cos 2, 2 pi f1 of t dt. So let's square it because x of t was this. So once I square it, I'll get B squared cos squared 2 pi f1 dt, f1 t dt. All right, next thing, I want to do a couple of substitution. Let's do a substitution here. Substitution. Okay, let's do a substitution. Let's say my x is 2 pi f1 d. What is going to be my dx? dx is going to be 2 pi f1 dt. And let's divide both sides by 2 pi, 2 pi by f1 and 2 pi by f1. So this cancels out. My dt would be dx over 2 pi f1. So I'm just going to simply make this a placement here. So this is going to be, okay, let's do one more thing. So this is 1 divided by 1 over 2 pi f1. So once I take this upstairs, this would flip. So this would become 2 f1. All right, let's, we'll change the limit as well. B squared cos of x. All right, in place of dt, I'm going to put dx over 2 pi by f1, dx over 2 pi by f1. All right, so far so good. Now, I'm going to do this 
I'm going to continue this step over here. So this is 2 by F1. Okay, let's apply the limit as well. Let's, I haven't applied the limit. So, so, so here's what I'm going to do. I have, I'm going to replace this limit. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to do this limit with respect to X. So this is how I'm going to change my limit. If it's 2 pi by F1, let's multiply this by 1 over 4 F1. Okay, this F1 cancels out, this F1 cancels out, this cancels out, and this cancels out. I left with pi by 2. So the limit would be changed from pi by 2 to negative pi by 2. So far, so good. So now, our limits is going to be from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2. All right, then this is going to be b squared cos squared x okay this is just a constant so i can take this out so this is 2 pi by f1 this this cancels out this and this cancels out i left with only pi all right so far so good i only left with one over pi so dx now the next step is going to be this this is going to be so this is b is squared is also a constant i left with pi here so I'm going to take this b squared out, and this is going to be divided by pi. Limit as it goes from negative infinity, uh, negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2. So I'll end up with cos of x dx. Now, here's the step I'm going to do. Here is another step. Here's another shortcut that I like to do. In order for me to solve this, in order for me to solve this, I know something about it. Um, I know my cos of x plus sine squared x is equals to 1. All right? I know my cos squared x plus sine squared x is 1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce this. So what I'm going to do is going to be b squared divided by pi what i'm gonna do negative pi by 2 positive pi by 2 okay and then i'm gonna include this goes to x plus sine squared x dx i know this whole thing is equals to 1 based on this identity so i'll end up with b squared pi as it goes from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 1 dx so i just simply made that replacement cos squared x plus sine squared x to 1 all right now here's the thing that i'm going to do okay what is the integration of 1 it's just going to be an x so once i apply my limit pi by 2 minus minus so here's what i'm doing what is the integration of one it's just going to be x isn't it so once i once i apply my limit so so this basically this is what i'm doing b squared over x sorry pi pi as i apply my limit from pi by 2 minus pi by 2 this is what i'm doing so this integration of 1 is just going to be x. This is that just adding term and I'm applying my limit. So pi by 2 minus minus pi by 2 would give you what? I hope you can see this. So this would give you what? Uh, 2 pi by 2. So this is cancelled. So you'll end up with pi. So I can take this pi out. So now let's, let's do this. Let's do this step here. Let's do this step here. So I'll end up with b squared pi. And the result of this guy is just going to be pi. So pi and pi cancels out. I'll end up with b squared. The result of b squared is when I have cos squared x plus sine squared x. When I have taken that assumption that cos squared x plus sine squared x is equals to 1. By, uh, but I only have cos which means half is going here, half is going here, but this half was missing, so this, I'll only have cos half, 
cos cos squared x, which means that that this would be half plus half would give me one. So this is half. So so I'm going to bring this half out. So this would become b squared over half. So the integration of this guy, this whole thing, is going to be b squared, b squared divided by two. And indeed, this is finite. Uh, this thing is defining some finite. Whatever the amplitude of the signal is squared divided by two, which dictates that this is ha this signal does have a finite amount of power. As you can see, this. I hope you're getting this last step. What have I done? Is this cos cos squared x cos squared x is actually I've I made this assumption. I have used this identity, which is cos squared x plus sine squared x is equals to one. So I've just taken this. I know this whole thing is one. So I have solved this based of based of being this whole thing being one. Once I calculate this, I end up with b squared right here. So that b squared, and I know this thing does not have a sign component, which means definitely half is going here, half is going here. So I plot that half out. Hence, I have this term b squared divided by two, whatever the amplitude of that signal is, divided by squared divided by two. This is the total amount of power which is present in this particular signal. Uh, okay, one more thing that you need to remember: what is the application of this? Uh, we will find this application in when we are designing an envelope detector for a double side band large carrier signal of amplitude modulated signal. In that particular signal, what happens is this: once I take my signal and once I pass it through a diode, diode actually changes the signal into a full wave rectifier signal, which is which looks something like this. So this is that. And then after that, you use proper filtering. Uh, based on those proper filtering, you will get your actual signal back. Um, so I hope you like this small tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, please do leave it in a comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.